Keep Nintendo weird, everybody. Your boy Seth here with you. Happy and thrilled, as always, to do another episode of the uh, weirdest Nintendo podcast on the internet. A weird Nintendo podcast about loving weird Nintendo games. Um, man, I am so thrilled to be doing this episode this week because, well, for, for many, many reasons. First of all, let me not get too ahead of myself because I just got off of vacation, so I'm a little bit, like, discombobulated. I'm not going to lie. You ever, like, whenever you stop and slow down, especially when it's been a while, like, for me, I haven't had a vacation in, like, three years, so... Stopping and slowing down is not something that I'm good at. It's something that I've honestly kind of forgotten how to do. And and so now I'm, I'm kind of like picking up the pieces. But um, it, it's, it's a really exciting episode. It's a game that I've wanted to cover on this show since its inception. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about Ghost Trick Phantom Detective, my very favorite DS game. It's really not even close. Like... That, that, that game is just so good, and we're going to obviously get into why. Um, and I'm also really excited to be covering the game with my special guest for this episode, Caroline Liddick, uh, formerly of Limited Run Games, which is how her and I first talked. Um, we uh, With my main show, All In, um, we, we worked with Limited Run um, for several different things, and uh, and Caroline used to be the PR person there and she was always so kind and and nice to me whenever uh i had to work with them and um just just a really pleasant nice person and when i was looking for ghost trick phantom detective content and like kind of fielding who should i reach out to to guest on this you know spoilers there are not many <laughs> ghost trick phantom detective like podcasts or videos or anything like that and lo and behold as i'm searching Caroline comes up in the search. She did an episode of Jared Petty's The Top 100 Games podcast, which is a really good podcast that I highly recommend you check out. I, I love Jared Petty. Would love to have... Jared, if you happen to be watching this, would love to have you on the show sometime. Um, but uh, but Caroline went on that show to talk about Ghost Trick, and I was like, oh my gosh. Like, you know, like, I'm familiar with Caroline. Like, we're we're acquainted, and, and and she's wonderful, and I love this game, and I loved her, like, passion. And, you know, she she's, like, one of the only other people that I know that love the game, so why not reach out? And and she was very, very kind and, and gracious, and, like, we got together on short notice and stuff. She She's just the best. So really excited for you guys to meet Caroline, and really excited to talk about Ghost Trick. Um... I, I don't normally do uh, a whole lot of rigmarole here in the in the like pre-roll, but I'm I'm kind of like experimenting a little bit more with that because I always feel weird and unnatural kind of doing the typical like plugging and social media stuff. So I, I sort of feel like maybe I should do it at the top because I always feel weird. A, I feel weird doing it at all. I'm not good at it, but um I know it's it's somewhat essential. So I, I want to talk about some of that stuff. Um here before we get into the episode proper. If you don't want to hear it, I, I get it. You can skip ahead. I'll have chapters in place uh, here on YouTube, or if you're listening to the audio version, you can just skip ahead a little bit if you want to. That's fine. I'm not going to be offended or anything like that. Um, but uh, I did want to talk about a couple of things real quick just before we get into the episode properly. First of all, huge thanks to everybody who checked out uh, the Majora's Mask episode. That was a really weird and personal episode of this show and the response to it was a little bit overwhelming because I, I really didn't expect that it, when, when you when you make something like that like first of all I had no notes or script or anything like that in front of me I never do um but for that one in particular it, it was really just stream of consciousness like it was just me just like I'm sitting here right now talking into the mic. That was it. And um, I didn't know what was going to... I didn't know what I was going to say before I said it, in other words. And I certainly didn't know I was going to touch on the things I did and get as personal as I did. And um, so when you make something like that, you never know how the audience is going to respond to it. And I'm just really, really thankful for y'all and, and grateful that you guys related to it and allowed me to... I, I just can't explain the, like, creative charge that I get out of people being, um, 
being able to relate to some of the things that I'm saying or like appreciating some of the things that I'm saying and allowing me to take creative liberties and to not always keep it squeaky clean. Um, so I just, I, I'm really, really thankful for y'all, um, for the response to that episode that, that really meant a lot to me. Um, also it occurs to me that some of y'all might be listening to the show purely in audio form, which is great and super thankful, but you might not be aware that I do this podcast also on video, um, over on YouTube. That's youtube.com slash all n podcast. And there are always links to that in the episode description. So if you ever want to watch the video version, um, either the guest will be on video with me or I'll have like gameplay footage playing or something like that. I do always supplement these, these episodes with video just in case you were an audio only listener. Um, and then also speaking of video, we did recently start up a Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash all in podcast, which will also be linked in the episode description. And, um, it's been something that I've been working really, really hard at, and I've been trying to be really consistent with, and I'm streaming Nintendo games over there. Like recently I've been streaming, um, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic on Switch and, uh, the, the legend of our cheese girl, Grana Padano. And, uh, it's, it's been a blast. It's been a lot of fun and we're trying to hit uh, Twitch affiliate by the end of the year. So if you could go over there and follow us on Twitch and hang out for some Twitch streams, I would be so appreciative. And, and I just, I have a blast doing that. I love doing it. Um, so we're, we're trying to be a little bit more aggressive with that. And the last thing I'll shout out the the last kind of like rigmarole thing I'll shout out is uh, five star reviews guys. So this is something that I've always been bad about. Um, asking for because uh like i said you know i'm not good at the social media thing anyway but five star reviews really do help a lot and in all of my time podcasting as, I, as i'm pulling up this review here um in all of my time podcasting i've never really asked for five star reviews but um if you do like this show on whatever podcast platform you happen to be listening on um a five star review a like on youtube whatever it really does help with visibility. So I super, super appreciate it. And I wanted to highlight, um, a five-star review that we got here on iTunes from our good friend, Eric Plunk, who is a member of the all in community. And we really appreciate Eric. We love Eric. And he says a celebration of the unusual. Eric says, now here's a million dollar idea for a podcast. Seth and a guest gush over some of Nintendo's quirkiest games. The absurdity of these games deliver a unique joy that shines through when being talked about. Host Seth is very well-spoken with a great radio voice. Nintendo has no shortage of weird titles to keep this show going for a long time to come. So really, really appreciate that. And if you would like me to read your five-star review, go ahead and drop it and uh, leave some words and I will read it on the show. So... Just super appreciative. Again, um, I'm not going to ramble for any longer, guys. We're going to get into the episode. We're going to talk to Caroline Liddick about Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. And as always, we're going to keep Nintendo weird. <laughs> All right, Caroline, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. I am so excited to do this episode. I've wanted to cover this game for such a long time. It is so special to me. Um, it, it's it's a really special game, and, and it's my favorite DS game of all time. Yes, no yes, question. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> like, Which is, no contest. It's nuts because the DS library has a lot a lot of really good games in it so for it ghost does. trick to be your favorite rightfully so also my favorite you know that's saying something man it it it, it, it is and i love the ds in general but um i i also think that like in the scope of ds games it, it's one of those games and we're going to get into all this course but it's one of those games that like takes advantage of the hardware and stands out i think in some interesting ways and it's really nice to have you on the show because um I, I was looking for any sort of ghost trick anything in terms of content on the internet. And spoilers, there's not much. Mm -mm. Um, like, you did the Top 100 Games podcast with Jared Petty, which is wonderful. Everybody go mm -hmm. listen to that. Um, Plus one. Yes, do it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's it's a fantastic uh, podcast, and, and you were great on there. But, oh, so, but, but, I mean, this is like... 
maybe one of three or four ghost trick phantom detective related podcasts ever. I so. think so. You know, when you <laughs> asked me to be on this podcast, I messaged my friends and I said that I will be on two podcasts now speaking about ghost trick. And I think that might make me like the world's most public ghost trick fan. You, you <laughs> might be, you might I, be the, <laughs> I did not look into it. So that is an uncontested <laughs> statement, but you know, Perhaps it might be so. <laughs> it's it's literally it's like Jared Petty, us, and Retronauts. That, yeah. that's like it. That's like it. It really so is. You're you're the world's leading expert on uh, on Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. Oh God, we're doomed. <laughs> we're doomed. <laughs> well, uh, Caroline, before we get into it, tell us a little bit about yourself. Kind of kind of set the stage for us. Tell us about your history and and yeah. um, why folks might know you. Okay, um, so I got into the games industry. Actually, I think it'll be just over five years ago now, um, nice. working as a community manager at Telltale Games. And mm -hmm. I was with them for just under two years um, when the very infamous closure happened and yeah. sort of threw hundreds of people for a loop without jobs and insurance. And, you know, um, it was very scary, very um, uh, sad time. Um, I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was rough. <laughs> I, uh, you know, broke a lot of it down in therapy over the years, and I've come to realize things about that time and, and myself. Um, but what happened after Telltale was that I got this opportunity to work with Limited Run Games. So that's where I went about, gosh, I don't know, a month or two months after Telltale closed. Oh, okay. Moved coasts. Went to Limited Run, and um, I was their director of communications uh, up until a few months ago, um, just, you know, helping get newsletters out, social media, PR. I mean, Limited Run is a very small company that, um, if you're not familiar with it, they make physical editions of typically digital only, but not necessarily um, video games. And mm -hmm. so very, very... T tight knit small company a lot of people wearing a lot of hats sort of situation um and yeah i worked with limited run for a long time being on streams hanging out with the community all that stuff so people probably know me from limited run or from telltale yeah yeah absolutely that that was where um i i first got to to meet you like on a kind of like personal level because we we worked with lrg several times on different things and you were always so wonderful to us every Aww. time we every time we communicated with you you were always great so you were you were Thanks. very very good at your job <laughs> oh thank you that uh, really does mean a lot to me um i really liked doing what i do and i like you know can connecting the community and developers or in limited runs case publishers mm -hmm. um and just being being the bridge so yeah and, and you guys you guys gave us the time of day when we were much smaller than we are now so <laughs> i uh i appreciate that a lot um it was yeah. awesome I, I actually let me ask you this caroline um mm -hmm. this is i've never had the opportunity to because we've had doug on the show before um mm -hmm. but but this was long before scott pilgrim happened Okay. And yeah. I I would I would love to. Were you there when Scott Pilgrim was was going on? Oh yes. I was that was madness? There. <laughs> oh, it was absolute madness. I mean, um, so we did bring up NDAs as much as I can yes. say without crossing NDAs. Is it was yes. a very long um, period of time getting to the moment where we were even positive that we were doing it, mm -hmm. and there was like you know about a couple months of this floating ethereal time where all of us were like 80 to 90 percent sure it was gonna be limited run right but that 10 percent, you were like oh gosh what if it's not like this is our white whale this would be so right. cool we know we could do a great job with this we had so many fans in the office like and so you know what the day when it was signed like it was like it happened and then josh just like told the news to basically the whole company and we were i mean we weren't actually <laughs> popping bottles but metaphorically <laughs> we were popping bottles i mean like really celebrating it was such a cool feeling and then to like finally announce that to the world was like probably number two feeling of my career at limited run it was just so exciting and it was really really a, a peak of the, my yeah. career there man i i just i remember when we had uh when we had Douglas on the show, uh, he was kind of saying it without saying it. And I was trying to get it out <laughs> he of him. He does that. If, 
Douglas yeah. ever watches this, he will know <laughs> my one of my most frequent um, responsibilities at Limited Run was to rein in Douglas <laughs> and be like, "Don't don't hint so much at this thing, or like try right. not to do that thing." And like, if we, you know, if we accidentally leak this game, we're gonna be in trouble with this person. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> he's, I, he the, was, he's the king. <laughs> he, was, he was definitely kind of like saying it without saying it. I was trying to get it out of him. He wouldn't do it, but I I, I was like literally on the recording I was like he's got to be talking about Scott Pilgrim and if that happens it will be the most massive thing to happen with LRG and uh mm-hmm. and then when it did it was just it was awesome what a what a great yeah moment. yeah so. and I mean they're only like up from there they're working with like Star Wars now I mean they've been doing mm-hmm. Star Wars since like halfway through my time there but um they're just I mean they're killing it so yeah. very proud of them and proud of the time that I spent there Yes, absolutely. Like I said, you, you made your mark and you, you will you will be missed, but we're excited to see what you do next. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Mostly so, right now and just taking a break. Playing yeah. video games. <laughs> yeah, playing video game fresh off of a and d session. Yeah. So mm-hmm. absolutely. <laughs> um, so let's get into Ghost Trick. Uh, now, I do have a couple of uh, community things here because what's really funny, Caroline, and, and you've probably encountered this too, in your time being a ghost trick fan, there are people like us who have played it and love it and gush about it, but there are even more people who are not like us and haven't played it. Um, unfortunately, um, (laughs) my buddy Dan from uh, the retro logic podcast came in. He said, I have some questions as someone else who has no reference for this game at all. He, he, he he was sort of being funny about it, but, um, (laughs) we're going to answer all of these. I think over the course of our discussion, how do you trick a ghost? Uh, (laughs) Is the detective a phantom or does the detective specialize in phantom related crimes? Okay. (laughs) And doesn't the notion that a ghost trick was involved with the crime sort of negate the need for a detective? So, Mm, mm, (laughs) so, yeah, those are all kind of, um, (laughs) it it must be kind of funny for somebody with no context of the game. uh, It is a wild title. And Mm -hmm. even as you're playing the game, like I sort of don't even think of it as, ghost trick phantom detective like those are just nonsensical words to me right. it's just whatever it's called <laughs> right. so like trying to break that down logically is wild but i do love it <laughs> yes so what kind of set the stage for us how what was your kind of first exposure to ghost trick yeah gosh um so i was a very big nintendo fan mm-hmm. growing up um I had an older brother who really was the arbiter of the PlayStation and Nintendo consoles and handhelds were really more my speed. And he didn't really necessarily like flex the muscles like, no, Kyle gets to play this now. So (laughs) I had more opportunity to play those games. And um, I picked up Ace Attorney. This is how we're going to loop it all in because I was a Nintendo Power subscriber and they had a big article about Ace Attorney, I remember. And I just remember reading it and being like, wow, like this sounds great. I like really was a fan and still am a fan of like video games that do things that are, you know, not typical. So Mm -hmm. like a puzzle, a logic puzzle, like narrative game at that time was like mind blowing to me. Um, So I picked up the Ace Attorney games, fell in love with them. I mean, they're amazing too. Don't get me wrong. Um, But Ghost Trick, I think, is the peak. And so when Ghost Trick was announced, I was like, oh my god, Shu Takumi is doing another game. And these these games are so good. And like, this looks so different and cool. And the art was fantastic. And it was just like, it was a day one purchase for me. I mean, well, really for my parents, because at the time I was a (laughs) child. (laughs) Um. So yeah, I I picked it up and played it, I mean, basically, I think in like three sittings, I was just like, ah, Mm -hmm. like solving the puzzles and, you know, getting to the end and being really concerned because I didn't have like a walkthrough to look up at the time. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I was just moving things around. Um, And yeah, that that was really my, um, my introduction to Ghost Trick. And it's sort of been, it's, it's been in my DS catalog, like I still have it in my original DS case over there in in my uh, living room area. Um, Because I just, I just freaking love the game. (laughs) I just, I think it's the best. (laughs) It's so good. It's It's an excellent game. (laughs) And, and and it's good that you still have it because that game goes now for well into the $150, $200 range. Yeah. I don't have the box. So I just, I just have the cartridge because I mean, I was a child, so I was just keeping loose cartridges in my case. Mm -hmm. It was a big mistake, (laughs) but 
you know? <laughs> yeah, I don't have to go for the iOS port and I don't have to like buy it secondhand. I'm going to keep yes. it around until my DSs all die and civilization is burned to the ground. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, just just in the post-apocalypse playing ghost trick. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> I yeah, I that was kind of like I I I didn't find out about Ghost Trick through Nintendo Power. I so mm-hmm. I used to work at GameStop and people who gotcha. listen to my stuff know my my history with GameStop and I had a regular customer who would come into the GameStop and he was this kid that loved like Ace Attorney, Professor Layton, you know, yes. this stuff. And uh and I also loved Ace Attorney and Professor Layton and wasn't aware that Shu Takumi had this other thing coming up, you know, but he mm-hmm. was. And he had his finger on the pulse and he was the one that told me uh, about Ghost Trick to begin with. And so um like picking that game up, I, I I was so blown away by that game. And I think I agree with you. I think that I love Ace Attorney, don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But Ghost Trick, I think, is the height of Shutakumi, yeah. like, absolutely. I think there are some things that Ace Attorney does better, and the sure. one thing that comes to mind more immediately is I think it is a lot better with comedy, but it's also, like, it's aiming mm. for comedy more often, I think, than right. Ghost Trick is. Ghost Trick is obviously comedic, but I think Ace Attorney just has more moments of comedy. You know, you, you right. cross-examine a parrot. <laughs> so right, I right. think it, it's a little bit more, um, there's more levity there yeah um but yeah i mean ghost trick i think is superior in terms of game design in terms of look um the composer i think is it's the same from the original ace attorney i think the music is better which is it's wild to even say because so many people love ace attorney rightfully and it is a nearly perfect game and ghost trick is just like a little bit better it's just that that edge you know I man, I uh, I I love the what one of my favorite things about Ghost Trick because it does have like it has the comedy and it certainly goes places um, mm-hmm. yeah. in, t- in terms of like its its craziness and its narrative and stuff like this. But there there is a certain like th- there there's a certain drama to it and there's a certain like more so than even Ace Attorney. I think there's like a I think the fact that it's like a singular kind of mystery that has layers that kind of keeps you wanting to dig deeper, I think yeah. makes Ghost Trick's story a little bit more effective to me versus the notion of like cases in Ace Attorney. Yeah. But I think if if you've played Ace Attorney before, but you haven't played Ghost Trick, it's almost as if Ghost Trick is like if you'd only played the first case and the last case in mm. Ace Attorney, like the cases that typically both bookend and are related to each other. Right. Like that's sort of how Ghost Trick feels that like everything is leading to these different like plot twists and to a central ending point that is a revelation to the player. Uh, it's just like, ugh, it's so good. It's that's, so good. That's a great point. <laughs> that's a great point. So what set up the game for us? What what kind of game is Ghost Trick and and like what's the story set up? How how do you describe yes. it? Wow. So <laughs> go- <laughs> how do no you describe Ghost <laughs> Trick? Ghost Trick is a visual novel slash puzzle game um where you play as a recently deceased man who is trying to solve his identity um and the thing about being recently deceased in the logic and the world of this game is that he can sort of jump between objects and manipulate them and so these puzzles become rube goldberg machines where you have to set off certain things so that you can save people's lives because the other thing about being recently dead in this world is that he can go into dead people, like recently dead people's bodies and rewind time to like four minutes before their death and then save them. Yes. So <laughs> I, I, it's so much to explain, to explain uh, to somebody was, who hasn't played the you game. You know, like you do, it's just your run of the mill <laughs> average game, you know? Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, not unique at all um yeah just another one of those go back in time save dead people stories yeah, you know it's it the way i think about ghost trick is like it's like explaining the most convoluted anime you've ever seen to somebody who like does not watch anime at all sure it's like yeah. so you can rewind time and then you can jump into these people and then there's these two spirits are speaking to each other and blah blah blah, blah and like yeah so ghost trick is a mystery 
where these Rube Goldberg machines of saving people, you slowly learn things about the protagonist's identity and about the people that are involved in this sort of ongoing night. Um, right. And yeah, God, how, what can you even say without spoiling the game? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good there, point. Yeah. There's, there's so many twists and turns that the beginning of the game, the setup of, I'm a dead man and I don't know who I am and I have to save this girl. And then the ending point are like, you couldn't get there. Right. <laughs> the normal person <laughs> would not like connect the dots, but Shu Takumi like has like masterfully and every twist makes sense. And he gets to this sort of wild conclusion where like, yeah, things go off. Things get crazy. Yes, they do. We, we've uh, <laughs> we've mentioned Shu Takumi a couple of times now, who is the uh, creator and sort of a- auteur, I guess, of um, of the Ace Attorney series and also Ghost Trick. And mm-hmm. there's something about Shu Takumi's games. He he just has this way of having drama and having like these interesting characters that have depth to them, but at the same time mixing in this sort of Japanese quirkiness. And just like lovable characters and like, um, I I don't know, like he has, there's a particular flavor to shoot Takumi games Mm -hmm. that I think is completely unique and you will not find anywhere else. I love his games. I 100% agree. Because like there are, I mean, there are wild things happening in this game. Like you're a ghost who can like move into you know a ladder and unfurl it and you knock over a soccer ball that opens up an umbrella that you know does that and does that but you're also like saving people's lives like there are right dark dark moments in this game that are you know balanced very delicately and very well with yes. these like levity like oh, I'm talking to a dead corgi now, or a dead <laughs> right. Pomeranian. I don't know what breed of dog Missile is. but I think um, he's a Pomeranian, but he, yeah. yeah. Oh, we'll talk about small... Missile. <laughs> <laughs> I love Missile. Missile's mm-hmm. such a good boy. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, the, uh, the, that, like, that mix of comedy and drama is just done so well. And um, to credit the localization teams, uh, as well like yes. translated into yes. english impeccably well as well and i that i think is you know um ace attorney games and ghost tricks like probably secret weapon i think is their localization team mm-hmm. because they're keeping in puns they're keeping in jokes these are things that are very difficult to do while you're like keeping the same amount of text on the screen and translating mm-hmm. it into a different language so they do a phenomenal job <laughs> That's such a great point. Yeah, I, I think, and, and it's also really hard to do comedy well in video yeah. games. Really oh, hard. Oh yeah, you know, it's so hard because comedy is so much about timing, and mm-hmm. video games are about player input. So you're relying a lot if you're less of a visual novel game than Ghost Trick is on player input and on emergent game gameplay to, you know be comedic how do you do that it's 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 hard (laughs) yeah yeah and i i guess like if if i were to try to describe the genre that ghost trick is in like it's kind of a visual novel i guess but it's more like a almost more like a point and click adventure game yeah Um, yeah but even that like it's it's more than just that because yeah the the main crux of the gameplay is yeah like solving these these murders and Mm -hmm. and kind of preventing them from happening especially when you take a character like lynn who must die six or seven times over the course of the game she Um, died so much uh but but yeah like it's all about kind of trial and error um and which i think a lot of people see as like a like a dirty word like a dirty phrase like trial and error but to me i think ghost trick makes trial and error not only funny but enjoyable like Mm -hmm. To, to see the way that things can go wrong or right, I think are equally rewarding yeah. in this game, which is difficult to do. <laughs> I think a lot um, about the level where you're trying to, I can't remember, you're trying to distract, um, I don't remember her name, but she's mm-hmm. the mom of the kid. She's like drinking wine yes. in, yes, her, yes, in yes. her glass. I remember the visuals so well. You're trying to distract her and you can set off, you know, 
opening this door which lets a mouse drop down but you sort of have to time it right and if you don't time it right funny things still happen you still get these mm-hmm. like animations that are beautiful and very funny and it's just like it's just fun it's just fun to be in the world and slowly piece things together because it's sort of reflective of what the character is going through too like he's slowly right. piecing his life together while you're piecing this you know rube goldberg together so yes yes uh, it's, great. <laughs> it's it's excellent. I so you mentioned the visuals, and that's something I definitely wanted to stop and talk about because this game is, and I and I've said this before on other podcasts, and people are like, "What are you talking about?" But this has got, for my money, the best animation work of any game ever. Like, I agree. It like the not only just because it's on the DS, and it, it like I I still like looking at the game in motion. I don't know how they did it. It just, <laughs> it, it looks so seamless and beautiful and like, just there's so much care in every frame of animation. It It is stunning to look at. Yeah. It's amazing because each character has such a distinct visual design. Um, yes. Not only in like the shape of the character, but also like the color of the character and how they walk, how they move, what sound effects are playing as they're talking. Right. These things, they all sort of merge together to make this design that is, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It doesn't look like anything else. And I think there are, you know, pixelated sprite games that have come out after on much more HD platforms that right. just don't look as nice. And they don't seem as seamless. Like, it's a fully (laughs) realized world that you're stepping into when you play Ghost Trick. It's, it's, and I think that's one of the differences between Ghost Trick and Ace Attorney that really step Ghost Trick up as well. Because Ace Attorney, you're more interacting with flat, you know, 2D art than you are with, like, actual models that are moving around. Um, Gosh. Yeah. So good. (laughs) <laughs> and, and and when you when you factor in the fact that these are kind of like Rube Goldberg style puzzles, like and, and that's I, I guess what we should say to answer Dan's question, that's what where the trick comes in because mm-hmm. you're possessing these items and you perform their each one has a an associated trick. So like mm-hmm. you mentioned, like early on in the game, um, there will be like a bed that unfolds, you know, and now mm-hmm. you can get a little bit closer to the lamp that you're trying to possess or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so that's what a ghost trick is. Um, you're, you're playing as a ghost and you possess other things and you perform the ghost trick to mm-hmm. solve these puzzles. Um, but, but you're right. Like the, the animations totally feed into not just the world, but like they, they give so much personality to the characters. Like if we just had, if, if uh, Cabanella was on screen and yes, yes, the best, the, the the best. best. <laughs> and, and if he was, if he were in an Ace Attorney game, right, he would mm-hmm. just be a 2D model and we would just mm-hmm. be looking at his face and maybe there would be a couple of little stilted keyframes of animation or whatever. But right. in this game, he does his wonderful little dance and mm-hmm. walk every time he's on screen and he is just the best and it just adds so much flavor to it. It adds so much because there are things that, you know, it's, it's a mystery um, story ghost trick mm-hmm. right so like a lot of mystery stories um, that people may have read or l- movies that they have watched you are supposed to believe things about characters um, yes. as soon as you meet them and right. ghost trick is very good at getting that across on the tiniest <laughs> the world's tiniest screen I mean the DS screens are smaller than like your average iPhone at this point oh, I yeah. think Much, so yeah. <laughs> um it it gets that across so well and then hand in hand with the plot twists and the things that you learn about these characters your perspective of the character changes and shifts in a way that feels really nice as well so you know cabanella is still doing his dance at the end of the game but you have a different perspective on you know why he is that way and it works so well oh oh (laughs) And and i think the models too, they're they were three D originally and then transposed into two D. So you just get a lot of, you know, movement and life out of them than you do versus like typical sprite animation too. Right. So if you look at the visuals like close up, you can see stray pixels sometimes like here or there that don't necessarily make sense if you're looking at it like still, like as a still shot. Mm-hmm. But in motion, it's it's gorgeous. It's stunning. 
It yeah. is genuinely like I, I played a lot of DS games. That was my home when I was a child. Genuinely, totally. this game is the best looking. It is it's so it's stunning. And it, it's Ugh. it's like, hey, uh, you know, this this weird little Capcom adventure game I is know. It, you know, is the best looking game on DS. Go figure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, it, I think what worked really well was I I read this in an interview like a long time ago. I think when mm-hmm. I was before I talked to Jared for his podcast, I was sort of like looking up things with Shu Takumi. And Ghost Trick was really like Capcom came to Shu and were like what do you want to do? And he was yes. like, I want to make this weird mystery game and everything's going to be wild and different. And it's not even Ace Attorney. And they were like, all right. And then he Man. made Ghost Trick, which is pound for pound, the best game that nobody's played. <laughs> yes. And and by the way, shout out to Capcom for doing that because that, that I think showcases such a willingness to embrace something unique and weird, which I think they understand is such an important part of their legacy. And mm-hmm. like, if you look at Shu Takumi's career, like like his start at Capcom versus what he does now, like he basically has always been able to do exactly what he wants to do. Mm-hmm. Like, and and I just I love that a a massive company like Capcom recognizes his talent and just kind of lets him off the leash to do whatever he wants. Yeah, I mean, Phoenix Wright, like Ace Attorney, has spawned like so much merchandise. There was um, the all female musical review in Japan. Right. Uh, by the Takarazuka folks, like the Phoenix Ray is everywhere. He's in Marvel vs. Capcom. I mean, people wanted him in Smash Bros. And by people, I mean me, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did too. I did too. <laughs> yeah. There's Nendoroids. There's, you know, there's everything. So I feel like they were, uh, yeah, like you said, like totally correct to go to Shu and be like, please, you've given us this gift. Do your thing. <laughs> do do, do your whatever thing. you want. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think that's just so smart. I think that there, you know, there are a lot of companies who don't recognize that and they try to muddle a little too much. Yes. And um, yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I won't say any names or whatever, but you know, there, there are certain companies that try to <laughs> we, like, we can put, all think yeah, exactly. <laughs> our separate thoughts. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And we'll probably have overlapping companies, you know, don't want to yes. say names, but <laughs> yes, I, I wanted to touch on something, a, a word that has come up a couple of different times in this conversation is identity. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think that ghost trick has a really interesting way of tackling identity and to the point where the game has kind of become, in its in its own little strange way, something that the trans community has latched onto, which I find really, really special about this game because the way this game deals with identity, I think, is super interesting and kind of like subtly brilliant. Um, because the idea of it is, is when a person dies, their ghost or their soul or whatever is only represented mm-hmm. by like a blue flame, like this amorphous blue flame and it isn't until they have their own memories and until they sort of unlock and remember who they were that they kind of finally realize themselves and and kind of become Mm -hmm. who they are and that that sort of is something that um plays a huge role in the story obviously and and you know a huge crux of the the journey that some of these characters go on is kind of learning who they are and i just i find that so brilliant that that's such a like, I don't even know if that's what they intended when they, you know, designed the game, but it ended up being like this kind of beautiful story about identity in a weird way. I love I, that. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I was thinking about this a lot because I think like as a kid <laughs> playing Ghost Trick, I was like, oh, this is fun. There's like nice little plot twists. When yeah. I replayed it last year, it very much was a different experience for me. Totally. I think I picked up way more on like the stuff that you're talking about because it is very much so a game where like in a way you aren't your identity but you are Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) there are some things that maybe you might assume about yourself or somebody might assume about you that might not be true or that you can reject um without getting into too much spoilers this is more first act sort of stuff but Mm -hmm. um Sissel, the protagonist, which I don't know if we've even said his name. I, we've gone this maybe, long and we haven't said not. Sissel. Sissel, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the protagonist, the lead character, the person you are in the game. Um, he learns something about himself that, you know, the character that you've been playing as for these like 
first couple hours, right? it doesn't really add up. And he rejects it. And even though like that's his identity, he turns back on it and, and well, it's not his identity. It's a assumed identity. Right. He turns back on it and he says, no, this is who I am. And yes. this is what I'm going to do now in this moment. And he saves someone's life. And that was that moment, I think, to me, really, really spoke to me personally, because mm -hmm. it is saying, like, you can choose. Like, you are who you think you are. It's not about, you know, these this supposed evidence. It's not about what people assume about you from, you know, past the past. Um, it's just who you are. Yeah. So that's really nice. And yeah, I mean, I can totally see where the trans community would be really into this game. Um, I think almost, I mean, it's not the exact same as Celeste since Celeste actually has a trans protagonist, but right, right. I think in a similar way to Celeste where it is about just like being, you know, mm -hmm. who are you? Who are you? That's the, that's the central mystery of ghost tricks. So naturally you're going to be thinking about it a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful game. It, it really, yeah, it's such a <laughs> that, it's such a beautiful kind of underlying message that I don't think a lot. I mean, you know, like you said, when I first played the game, I didn't take that away from it at all. You know, yeah, and 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 you know, it's only kind of coming back at, at, and especially seeing some of the stuff with more analytical, like adult eyes, that mm -hmm. you start to to pick up some of that stuff. And I think that you know, because as you said, it's like assumed identities. The only reason, yeah, you know, I mentioned that when when a person dies in this world, they're they're this blue flame. They don't know who they are until they sort of mm -hmm. unlock their memories. And the only reason that Sissel thinks he is who he is is because mm -hmm. he's he's like that's it, literally it's like that must be me. That's my body. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's the only thing There's there. a body. That's who I am. We yeah. got to figure out who that man is. Yeah, that's and that must be me. Yeah. Ugh. And Ugh. and and then it, it's it sort of becomes like a thing where he he even sort of behaves a certain way because he he thinks he has to behave that way to assume that identity that he thinks he mm -hmm. has to be a part of. Um, yeah. It's so it's so it's subtly brilliant. I, it really really yes. is. Um. Man, I, uh, I I think that that plays a big part into to what makes this game special. It's not even really about like, just like Ace Attorney, I, I don't love these games for gameplay necessarily. Right. I love them <laughs> for personality and story and characters. And they they have that in spades, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, I will say the gameplay is really fun. It is. The first time you're playing. Playing it over again, especially the beginning parts of it, there are like moments where I'm like, oh, I wish I could just skip this. Like I know the solution sure. and I'm just sort of, I want to, you know, reevaluate the story, but it isn't, it is interesting to play the first time. I mean, it's not, you know, a first person shooter where you're hitting a million buttons at once and you, you know, you have 50 parts of your brain activating at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it is, it is fun in its own way. <laughs> yeah yeah it's got its own it's it definitely has its own gameplay charms um i've got a comment here from the community from uh our friend eric plunk he says i have a brief fuzzy memory of playing a demo for ghost trick which was wirelessly downloaded from the wii to my dsi so yeah sh yes! shout out to that nostalgia bomb there right <laughs> oh um, god and he says uh Unique was the main word that came to mind about the game at the time. Unfortunately, I never bought the full game on DS or iOS. The game screams for a re-release, and if it happens, I will not miss out this time. Man, how nice would that be to play this game it on Switch? It does. Oh, yes. it does scream for a re-release. You're so right, Eric. You are yes. so right in so many ways. I think um, Ghost Trick is sort of in its moment where a lot more people are talking about it and and thinking about Ghost Trick and how it was great because Ace Attorney got those Switch re-releases. Right. And so I think Ghost Trick has gotten this weird bump off of that where everyone's like, oh yeah, this game also happened and that looks cool and it's on iOS, I could play it. But if they, like, I would take, okay, <laughs> sorry. No, I got go so excited it. about this that my brain was just like, <laughs> pew, 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 pew. Um, <laughs> I think they could remaster it. I know I literally just said like, oh, the visuals are stunning and don't, you know, they're amazing. But mm -hmm. I do think that they could upgrade the visuals a little bit yeah, and it would still be beautiful. Yeah. And you could still have the experience of having, you know, the exact um, launch day visuals on DS, on the phone, on iOS. Um, 
But you could do like a sort of Ace Attorney style remaster where, you know, pretty much everything's the same. It's just sort of like bumped up a notch across the board. And right. it would be so fun because you could yeah. you could use utilize this touch screen for the switch um, on the DS. Honestly, I played mostly with buttons. And so the pro controller would be great. Be great be to fine. play it on a TV screen. Are you kidding me? Yes. Ugh. That'd be so beautiful. And then, like, you could even use, like, the Joy-Con pointer or gyro or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, oh. you could totally do that. That'd be great. That would be amazing. Now I want that to happen. <laughs> I, I'm I know. just, like, uh, misty-eyed. Well, maybe. I mean, look, they Capcom, as you mentioned, re-released the Ace Attorney trilogy. I, I mm-hmm. think that they're probably going to do more of those. I hope yeah, that the I rest so. of the Ace Attorney series comes to comes to Switch. And they just put earlier this year, they localized the great Ace Attorney mm-hmm. games. So, I mean, they're not like ignorant. You know, Capcom is not um unaware of demand for this stuff. Mm-hmm. So I, I you know, I wouldn't say that it's an impossibility that we see yeah. Ghost Trick on Switch. I th- I think out of all of the things that I want, you know, remastered for Switch or put on some sort of virtual console for Switch. Probably Ghost Trick is the most likely to happen. Sure. So I'll hold on to that hope. You know, everything else like Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door, don't necessarily know if that one's happening. But yeah, yeah, that's one of those things they they know they can uh, remake that and charge you sixty dollars for yeah. it or whatever. You know, <laughs> so they they know we'll buy that. Um, <laughs> I've got a comment here from Shy Guy City, who's one of our newer Discord members, and Shy Guy says, "I think I." I, uh, I, it's been, I think, over a decade since I last played Ghost Trick, but I played the entire thing in one afternoon when I wow. borrowed it from a friend. That's impressive. Um, it felt like a creative fever dream from the core conceit of the gameplay to the over-the-top characters and story and writing reminded me a lot of Zack and Wiki in that regard. Shout mm. out to Zack and Wiki. I love that game. That I don't is, even know uh, what Zack and Wiki is. Oh my gosh, it's a it's a wonderful you you would like it. It's it's a wonderful kind of like adventure style game on Wii. That oh, is, I will uh, look into really this. Good. Really, really good. Um, that that is on the Keep Nintendo Weird list. We're gonna do an episode on <laughs> Zack and Wiki eventually. Um, but with more approachable gameplay and a less frustrating use of trial and error design. Oh, and Missile is still probably my favorite video game dog. Yes. <laughs> Yes, Missile is the best boy. We I have to talk so about much. Missile. We have to stop and talk about Missile because not only is Missile a wonderful central character to the mm-hmm. plot of this game, um, it's he isn't just like a throwaway side character whatsoever. He's the best boy. He's adorable. He's named and he's he's based on Shu Takumi's IRL dog. Mm-hmm. Um, which which makes him even better. We did uh, so on on my main show all in. We do top fives every week, and we did okay. top five good boys. And Missile was my number one. Just one hundred percent. He deserves it. He deserves it. <laughs> Missile also makes a cameo. Oh gosh, which Ace Attorney is it? I think it might be the second Ace Attorney game. Yeah, it's in one of them. Yeah, I don't remember which one, but yes, he yes. briefly shows up. I think I don't even think it's a. Um, Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a necessary path um, like a, yeah, dialogue yeah. option. I think you like literally have to ask about something like weird in the police station, and then they bring up missile. Oh no, because he's part of the case. I not Ace Attorney. <laughs> We're not he's, talking about Ace Attorney. <laughs> yeah, he's so, and, and it's also I, I don't even know if it's necessarily because again, this is based on Shu Takumi's actual dog. Mm-hmm. So like like I think Shu Takumi probably just works a missile in. You yeah. know, whenever he can. He's like, all right, we're going to put my dog into this game, which is great, and everyone should do that. Um, Just everybody. <laughs> yeah, Missile Missile is the best. So without giving away spoilers, I know we've talked about Rube Goldberg machines, but mm-hmm. throughout the course of the game, you will interact with different spirits who have slightly different ghost tricks to Sissel, the main yes. character, the person you're playing as. Missile is the first one that you encounter, and... I just freaking love him. His his trick is to swap things that look the same but are different, right. you know, sizes. So they have the same shape but different sizes. So like the big thing that I'm thinking of is there's like a chunk of a statue that's sort of leaf shaped that you can switch with a leaf. Yes. And every time he shows up, I mean, in typical good boy fashion, he's just like, "Hi, I'm Missile. I'm here to help. What's what's what are we doing? Who are we saving?" I mean, this dog 
may I remind the audience, is dead. This dog, this yeah. is a dead dog who's just still being a great boy and just, you know, helping Cecil along whatever he has to do to save whoever is, is needed to be saved at the time. And that mm-hmm. is that is definition of a good boy. And like you mentioned, he's very central to the plot in ways that we can't talk about without right, literally right. spoiling so much of the game's twists and turns. Um, so, yeah, he's just the best. Missile is probably one of the most loyal characters in video game history. Mm-hmm. Like the the lengths that Missile goes to 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 be a a companion is uh, is unbelievable, and that's all I'll say about that. Um, so such a Bless great up, character. Missile. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Such a great <laughs> character. Um, uh, our buddy Phelan Emerald Element in the uh, in the Discord also shouted out. He's I've never played it, but I remember seeing the trailer for it on that Nintendo Week show on the Wii's old Nintendo channel. Oh gosh, good memory. So a lot of people I think are getting a little bit of weird <laughs> nostalgia for for this kind of era of Nintendo, which is one of my yeah, favorite eras of Nintendo. The late DS, early Wii. You know, everybody votes channel. <laughs> sort yeah, of era. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I have such a soft spot in my heart for this kind of era of Nintendo. And this kind of that's kind of like the the whole conceit of of me making this show is like I like I love that Nintendo has stuff like this that mm-hmm. that we can latch on to as fans and um and again we can draw, you know, little like not not only appreciate it for its weirdness and its quirkiness, but we can also draw actual you know deep themes from it. And this yeah. is stuff that I want to see more of. Re-release, whatever. I just want to see more of it. You yes, know? I feel like um, you know recent Nintendo games have been more similar to AAA games from other platforms than right. ever before. That's not to say they're not you know a little bit weird. But they're certainly not, you know, the ghost tricks, the cooking mamas, sure. the Nintendogs of the world. Yeah. That era, I think, had just so much diversity and uh, so many good games that were very different to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, that I miss that a lot. <laughs> they're, they're, that's definitely it's you know keep Nintendo weird. I, I want to mm-hmm. see them. I, I want to see them. You know, hang on to those those weird roots of, of you know games like this, where you know it's 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 something unlike anything you're getting anywhere else. You you don't yeah. see games like this on PlayStation or Xbox or anything no. like that. And you, you, know. you haven't seen a game like Ghost Trick since Ghost Trick came out. Yeah, which before was, or since. Yeah, I mean, decades ago at this point. I don't even know the exact year because my brain is scrambled eggs most <laughs> days. But, you know, it's been so long. And uh, you just... It's such a it's such a good game. And it's, it is still so unique. In November of 2021... This game that came out so long ago, still it stands the test of time in ways that so many games from that era and even closer to now don't stand up. And this game is still very, very perfectly, amazingly good. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, unfortunately, um, as I mentioned earlier, the game is extraordinarily expensive on DS. It has become, mm-hmm. kind of, you know, it, it was terrible because like, whatever happened with my copy happened. I don't have the game anymore. And I, um, and, and I was looking into it and I, I literally could have bought it for like 30 or 40 bucks a couple of years ago. Uh. And I, I passed on it at the time. And then I went back to it literally like maybe a month or two later and it was all of a sudden $200. It's like, wow. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Uh, so <laughs> I bet there aren't that many copies in circulation. Must because, be what it is. I mean, it didn't sell very well at the time in the first place. And then I feel like, you know, over the years when people cut down on their collections, it's probably one of the ones that people are willing to let go of. Right. And then it just disappears into the ether of, you know, Goodwills and secondhand shops and yard sales and who yeah. knows where it is at this point. Yeah. And so, I mean, if, if, you know, if, if there were a way to, to get it, um, on, on DS affordably, I would recommend that, but it is available on iOS and they did like a weird thing where you can pay for each chapter of the game, mm-hmm. which is kind of odd. And I, I almost wonder if they were to re-release it on switch. I hope they just do it all whole cloth. Like I just want to buy yeah. the game. I don't want to buy it in chapters, <laughs> you know? Right. Um, no microtransactions and ghost no, trick, please. <laughs> no, 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 no tricks here. I, uh, but, but I definitely, I hope they do because I, I hope the game gets like a second shot, um, mm-hmm. and 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 kind of a more mass appeal. I mean, the Switch has been such a massive success, and I mm-hmm. think that the audience would latch onto something like Ghost Trick. I Absolutely. think they would too. 
Uh, Caroline, before I let you go, I don't want to take up your entire evening. Uh, <laughs> if you, uh, anything, any like kind of final thoughts on Ghost Trick before we wrap up? Gosh, I, I mean, I've spouted so much about it. I'm trying to think <laughs> if there's anything we haven't talked about. We talked about Cabanella, which was a point that I really wanted to talk about because mm-hmm. his dance animation is so good. Yes. Lynn is amazing. Sissel's amazing. Missile's amazing. It's great characters. I think if you've played an Ace Attorney, if you've played, um, you know, even a, a you know, those DS era games that are weird, that are a little bit weird. I, I think this does have mass appeal. I think people would like it. Um, if you don't have it on DS, get it on the iPhone if you have one. And just, you know, poke around and see if you like it. I think you'll be hooked. It is yeah. a phenomenal game. It is so good. And I and it is also pretty short gameplay-wise. So yeah. if you don't have a lot of time, it's only about, I think, like 10-ish hours to play. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think everybody should give it a shot. It's just, it's a great game. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. If if, if our just uh, gushing hasn't uh, told you <laughs> enough about how much we love it, we we obviously highly recommend it. Um, mm-hmm. Caroline, how can people kind of keep up with you and uh, and follow you on social media and all that fun oh, stuff? Oh gosh, um, mostly just on Twitter. Uh, mm-hmm. My handle is at Caroline Lydic. It's my name. Um, and uh yeah i just post a lot of nonsense there so if you like nonsense and memes and maybe a couple hot takes about video games here or there that's uh <laughs> that's the place to go <laughs> i love it we we love nonsense and hot takes here we we love it so everybody go go follow caroline you'll find all that info uh in the episode description caroline i want to thank you for hanging out it was so much fun you you're an absolute delight and i love this game oh. it, it was great Thank Thanks you. again for inviting me. I, I again, we'll talk about Ghost Trick whenever, wherever. <laughs> I'll drop everything. I'll run up and be like, blah, and just like spout all this nonsense about Sissel. And yeah, yeah. Ugh. <laughs> I love it, guys. Well, uh, again, follow Caroline on Twitter. Keep up with her. We are looking forward to seeing what she does next. Play yourself some Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. Um, thank you so much again, Caroline. And thank you guys for helping me keep Nintendo weird. Bye. Bye.